Hi everyone, I'm Tori, a brow and lash artist, and welcome to my step-by-step -step tutorial for a brow tint and wax treatment. Always start your treatment by cleansing the brows and the surrounding area. Here I'm taking a clean dry cotton pad and using a gentle cleanser to remove makeup, bacteria, natural oils and pollutants that sit on our skin. After cleansing, I take a clean cotton pad over the area to ensure that the brows are fully dry. Next, I'll make up the tint for my client. Here we're going to use a mid-brown with an ash base, and that's so that we match her natural colouring and skin tone. I aim to apply the tint in a relatively precise way. Even though the brown that I'm using won't stain the skin, I find that by creating the shape of the brow I'm aiming to achieve, it gives a much better finish, and I just prefer the result rather than covering the whole area. I use a fine angled brush to apply, and I ensure that all the little vellus hairs around the shape are also included and covered. This will help create a fuller, thicker eyebrow, which is something we're definitely trying to achieve with this lady. If you over apply or mess up at all, I love these cosmetic buds to clean up the brow area. These ones are from Boots and they have a really good pointed tip at one end and that helps you be super precise. And then a flat round bulb at the other. They're so good for brow treatments. I use them for lamination and my signature brows too. You'll see me use them throughout this tutorial. So same process on the other side, I'm just following the natural shape of the brow, going a bit wider to make sure that we're picking up all those little hairs. My clients naturally got quite fair eyebrows, so you want to make sure that you really have covered all the downy hair that sits on the skin, just to try and create an illusion of a thicker, fuller brow. And again, don't worry if you go too far outside, just take one of those cotton buds and clean up the area where needed. Once all the hairs are covered, they will get tinted, but I do get a bit perfectionist about this step, which you can see. I do like to keep it as tidy as possible. What was difficult to show from either camera angle is that I do regularly take a step back and look at the shape that I'm creating when I apply the tint and make sure that it's even as symmetrical as possible. Again, I just find that being as precise at this stage really does help with the overall finish of the brows. So I'm going to take one of my trusty cosmetic buds to check how the colour is developing. Just wipe away a small section so that you can see the hairs. If it needs more development time, just tidy up in the areas and leave for another minute or so before checking again. To create a more natural looking brow, I like to take the tint off the front or bulb section and leave the mid to the tail end to develop a little more. Naturally, our brows tend to be a bit more sparse at the front and this technique gives a really nice natural finish, which is what my client is after. Every tint manufacturer is different, so check the one you're using for the guidelines on how long you need to leave it for color to develop. Once you're ready, I then remove the rest of the brow tint with a cotton pad. Make sure you go thoroughly through the brow to ensure you've removed all of the tint. To 
To help give a guide for the wax, I take a flat edge brow pencil and map out the lower line. My client has some areas where the hairs just don't grow back, so we keep the brows as full as possible while minimising the amount of makeup needed as she wants a low maintenance natural look. As well as stepping back away from my client at times to review her brows, I'll also step behind her so that I'm above her head looking down. I find that this perspective is really helpful as it sometimes allows me to spot areas that need adjusting from a symmetry perspective. Right, we are now ready to wax the brows. My client, however, uses retinols in her skincare routine. And this is information that you need to gain while you're completing a client consultation. She stops using retinols before her treatment by about a week, but I always still apply an oil to the skin and then follow that by applying a powder. The oil and powder act as a barrier and reduce the risk of skin grazing or lifting that can sometimes be caused when people are using retinols or active ingredient skincare. I'm using warm cream wax today and precision waxing techniques to achieve a crisp, smooth line and finish. You take a small pea sized amount of wax on the tip of the wax stick. With the first application, you distribute the wax a couple of mil below the wax line. On the second application, you use the whole stick to push the wax up towards where you want that crisp finish. I use wax strips cut to small lengths to remove the wax. Apply over the top of the wax in the direction of the hair growth and smooth down with firm pressure. Get a good stretch on the skin and then a quick firm removal in the opposite direction of hair growth. Now for me, I don't worry if my wax paper overlaps the brow area as I know I've been ultra precise with my wax application. However, if you're a beginner and still mastering this step, I would line your paper up exactly to where you want the brow line to finish. Remember, you can always go back in and remove unwanted hair with tweezers. Avoid applying wax too low down onto the eyelid. The skin is very delicate and thin um, in this area, so it's better to just use tweezers if there are low down hairs that need removal. Again here, you can just see that application method where you distribute the wax a little bit lower down and then push it with the stick up towards that pencil line. That's how you get that lovely crisp finish. You want to work quickly and accurately at this stage and always make sure you've got a good stretch on the skin before removing the wax. I generally always remove in three sections. If someone's got particularly sensitive skin or if it's their first ever treatment, I will do even smaller sections of hair removal. Next, I apply a post wax oil. This will help soothe the skin and remove any wax residue left behind. I'll now use a tint stain remover to clear unwanted or excess tint from the eyebrows. I'll use a mascara wand or spoolie to brush the brow hairs into place. This helps gives a really good view of all the hairs that have been tinted and the shape that we're trying to achieve for the finished result. Again, I'm taking a step back and I'm looking at which hairs may still need to be removed through tweezing and also where some makeup may be needed to finish the brows. 
to try and help communicate what I'm visualizing, I've created these red markings. When I'm regularly stepping back, this is what I'm creating in my mind's eye for my client. I'm thinking about the finished result, how we can get as much symmetry as possible between the eyebrows and how we can ensure that they don't have lots of makeup to do um, to create a really full flattering finish. So while still visualizing those red lines, I'll now go in with my tweezers to perfect the shape and remove hairs that sit outside of those lines. When tweezing, ensure you've got a really good grip on the hair and then pull in the direction of the hair growth. This will help ensure that you pull out the root of the hair and not just break it off at the skin. That way your client's results will last a lot longer. I'll now brush the hairs back into place again and check for any particularly long or curly brow hair. I don't like to over trim brows because I think it can give a slightly spiky or overly groomed look, um, but I will make sure the hairs are sitting well and just snip off the ends of any particularly long hairs. I'd recommend just tailoring your treatment depending on what your clients need. Not everyone needs their brows trimmed. In the final steps, I'll add a little concealer with a fine angled brush. I apply in small dots across the brow line. The reason I do this is it helps to cover up any redness, um, which is nice for clients that are perhaps about to go off somewhere straight after their treatment. But it also helps crisp up that brow line and it can make it easier just to see any hairs that may have been left behind. Particularly when clients are fair, this is really helpful. It also preps the skin nicely for any um, brow pencil or brow makeup products that you're going to use. You can see here, I've just noticed a couple of hairs at the front after I've applied the concealer that needed taking away. So I just went in with my tweezers and removed them. So I wanted to show you the um, other brow from the overhead angle just to see exactly what I'm doing. So applying it in dots and then smoothing it down towards the eye crease. It's a very, very small amount of concealer. And then I do also go in with the cotton bud again, that trusty cotton bud that I love just to blend away and up into the brow. At every step and stage of a brow treatment, I will take a step back and look at the brows and see if there's any hairs that I still need to remove. And that's exactly what's happened here. I've taken a step back and I've just noticed a couple of brow hairs that I'm not happy about. So again, I just go in with my tweezers, make sure I've got a good grip on the hair. Sometimes I'll even give it a little wiggle to make sure I've got it at the root and then pull out in the direction of the hair growth. I then just add a touch more concealer just where I have done that extra tweezing and caused a bit more redness. I like to use a fine angled brush for my concealer, but that's just a personal choice. I just find I can get a really nice finish underneath the brow line with a fine angle. Blend away the concealer just to make sure there's nothing heavy sitting on the skin. And then finally, I use a brow pencil to create very light hair strokes in the gaps. My client wants a natural finish to her brows and she wants a low maintenance option so she doesn't want to be applying lots of pomades or brow gels so we opt for a pencil for a quick natural finish. Again, take a step back, look at the brows, see how they're sitting, see where the gaps may still exist um, and then go back in with the pencil and then review again. I just find taking your time and, and building makeup in slowly gives you that much more natural finish. And even at this stage, I can tell I'm about to go back in with the tweezers because I'm not happy about a hair or two. Yeah, here we go just under that arch area. 
This is personal preference and it's just how I like to work, but I much prefer to keep assessing the brows and keep coming back in with my tweezers than feeling like I've taken too much early on. And then the same on this side, I've just noticed a little hair that I want to remove. I think it's just one or two just to perfect that shape. And then finally, brush the brows into place before handing a mirror to your client so she can see her fresh brow tint and wax. Here's the before and here's how they're looking after. Hopefully you agree that's quite a brow transformation. I hope you found that tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below and I will get back to you. I'll be uploading more step-by-step -step tutorials soon. In the meantime, if you'd like tips on how to grow thicker brows, check out my five steps to fuller eyebrows video. Or perhaps if you're starting your own beauty business, I've got a beginner's guide linked here. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys again on the channel soon. Take care. Bye.